All right, guys, we are back with Scratching and Surviving. The NFL season has been complete, at least for the regular season, but now we ramp it back up again with the playoffs. I've got some ideas for you guys and want to show you some tips and tricks on how you could possibly win your office football pool for the playoffs. Stick with me. All right, guys, I want to show you how I go about um, using the odds and the implied probabilities to try to figure out one, I mean, who does the, who do the lines makers, the odds makers think are the best teams out there? And then I can use that information maybe to make some decisions in whatever type of pool I'm in. So I'm going to talk about survivor pools. I know a few of you have uh, brought that up to me on um, playoff type of survivor pools. And by the way, congratulations to those of you who were able to cash in on your yearly regular season uh, survivor pools. It was a difficult year for sure. Hopefully you were with me for most of it, learned a little bit of something. Um, maybe I could have given you some advice, hopefully that would have cashed in for you. I unfortunately got knocked out pretty late um, in some big ones. There was one for half a million dollars that I was down for the last uh, 20 or so entries. That was a tough one, tough pill to swallow, but it was a really, really tough season, especially in a pool like that where I had to make two picks per week. Tough, tough to survive. So congratulations to those of you who did. Also, please, down below, there are links to the different sports books. And I'm going to be talking about a few sports books here. There's links down below if you want to check out these odds yourself, these future odds. You know, a lot of these uh, sports books are now offering these great promotions. If you are not signed up already, a lot of you who are in DFS may be already signed up with uh, DraftKings or FanDuel. But Caesars, BetMGM, um, a bunch of other sports books out there offering great deals for when you sign up. It's, it's sort of free money, so it's crazy not to. We're going to hopefully do a video in the future on how you can utilize some of these um, promotions and make the most money that you can from these promos. But uh, yeah, check those out, and that's where you're going to be able to check where the odds are on the Super Bowl, how what the odds are of teams advancing to the championship game and the Super Bowl, so on and so forth. And of course... Download the Sharp app, guys. Uh, it keeps improving. If you downloaded it and looked at it back in September and you haven't looked at it since, you really need to look at it now. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in there, including handles. Handles will show you how much money is being bet on each team, how many tickets or what ticket percentage is being bet on a team, and then what the money percentage is bet on that team. And I could do a whole video and will on how we could utilize that in our sports handicapping. But Let's get into what we're here to discuss today, and that is how do we calculate the probability or the implied probability based on the, the odds that we're seeing at the various sports books, and then how do we utilize that in our um, in our pool? So I don't know exactly what your pool rules are, and um, there's going to be a variety of pools that you're going to use this technique on, or at least maybe it'll give you some good uh, some good ideas for not just the NFL, but other type of pools that you may be participating in. Now, this works really well in those fantasy type of pools where you get to pick a player for the entire playoffs. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. But in the black here, and I've got a link down to DraftKings below, these are the odds that each of these teams lose in a particular round. right? So Kansas City, the odds of them losing are plus 200 in the wild card round. What I've done then here next to that is convert that into the probability. And what's the probability Kansas City loses in the first round? It's 33.3%. Now that's based on the odds. Now there's something called a hold percentage and that is here, okay? I've got videos on this, so I don't want to get too in, in detail on this. Um, I'll link to the videos below on hold, implied probability, things like that. And you can check those out. It's all part of the Sharp Academy. You could also just download the Sharp app inside the Sharp app, head to the Sharp Academy. I've got so many videos that are going to help you become a sharper, more intelligent sports better, and hopefully put some more money in your pocket and not with the sports book. So check that out as well. Now, we have the hold here. The hold is basically the juice. It's what the sports book is making um, on these bets. Now, there's 100% prob probability that Green Bay does one of these five things, right? 
There's a 0% chance they lose the wild card round because they're not playing in it. But they have a 34.5% chance, according to the odds, to lose the divisional round, right? They could, they could lose in the conference championship game. They can make the Super Bowl and lose, or they can win the Super Bowl. Those are the only things that can possibly happen. So if we add them all up, it should equal 100% because there's a 100% chance one of these things is going to happen. It equals 111.9 because, again, like I said, that's the juice that's being held by the sports book. So what we want to do is get rid of that juice. We want to convert it. And we want to, in order to do that, what we need to do is take the implied, well, actually, I should show you how to do the calculation. Again, check out the videos on, videos on this, but I'm going to do it really quick. Um, if you have a, if you have a plus money, that's an underdog situation, plus money. The way to calculate that into percentages is you take 100 divided by whatever the plus money is. In this case, it's 190 plus 190. You're going to take 190 plus 100, which is 290, right? So you'll have 100 on the top. The numerator is hundred. You divide that by 190 plus hundred, which is 290 gives you 34.5%. To do that, on a to do that with a uh, favorite anything with a minus number is going to be indicative of a favorite you would do the formula for that is negative the odds so you essentially we want to bring the odds to a positive number so 190 and you can see it up here in my calculation so it's 190 and then you're going to divide that by again take the absolute value here of uh, 190 or multiply it by a negative one gets you 190 plus 100 is 290. So you would have 190 divided by 290, and that gives you 65.5%. Um, I'm not going to go, like I said, into too much detail. I've got videos on that. It's a fairly simple calculation. And now you get to whole percentage, like I talked about, and that's just adding all of these up. And I find out that it equals 111.9% for Green Bay, 106.8% for Kansas City. And I want to convert that. I want to get this to 100%, right? I want this to equal 100%. Now, it's not absolutely perfect, but for our purposes, this is good enough. And we just want to divide the percentage that we figured out for the implied probabilities that the team loses in the wild card round, they lose in the divisional round. And we want to divide that by the entire hold amount here of 111.9. That's going to of course, reduce the number that we see here because the probability that the sports book is giving you is always going to be higher than the actual probability of an event happening. That's the juice. All right, when we add these all up, we get 100%. This is the probability now that Green Bay loses in the divisional round, right? 30.8% because it's not likely. That they lose in the cha conference championship, that they make the Super Bowl, and then the probability that they win the Super Bowl at 17.9%. How do I now figure out what the probability is that they advance to each one of these rounds? All right, well, we know in the case of Green Bay, they're automatically going to win the wild card, right? They're going to advance here uh, because they've got the buy. But what we would do is take the probability that the team advances beyond the wild card or wins their wild card weekend and then subtract it by the probability that they lose the divisional round, right? And then to figure out the conference, we would figure out, we would take their odds of advancing to the divisional round and subtract it by the probability that they lose in the conference championship game, right? And then to get to the Super Bowl, we would take the probability of making the Super Bowl and subtract it out from the probability of getting to the uh, conference game, 37.3%, and subtract out the 19.4%. This is, this, is this will give you the probability that they win the Super Bowl, which should equal this number, right? So what we really want to know is what's the probability of each team getting to whatever round it is or advancing. This is really to win. So to play one game, this is to win the wild card. This is to win the, a divisional game. This is to win the conference. This is to win the Super Bowl, right? So now why is that helpful? Well, of course, if we're in some sort of a survivor pool, and let me just bring this over so we can see which teams we're talking about here. If we're in some sort of a survivor pool, 
typically the survivor pools are going to have um, a lot of them for the playoffs actually are going to force you to pick two teams in week one, maybe two teams in week two, and then one team, one team. So you're going to have to pick six games correctly. Uh, that's going to be really difficult to do. Of course, your goal is to try to keep teams alive. You want to pick teams. Um, you want to be able to at least have teams to pick. Um, there's a potential there, of course, that you'd be out of teams to pick because you advanced, but all the teams that advanced you've picked already, and you could be in a situation where you took uh, Kansas City and Dallas, and they're playing each other in the Super Bowl, and you cannot make a pick. So, um, you know, part of the strategy here is trying to keep teams alive as long as you can. Now, depending on the type of pool you're in, I've seen it where you're in a small pool, and uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. You may not have to pick the Super Bowl winner because it's not that many people in the pool. Now, again, like we talk about in regular season, if you're in a small pool, you're going to be a little bit more chalky with your picks. If you're in a large pool, you're going to have to take some chances, right? So if I'm in a small pool, um, then maybe, yes, I'm going to save Green Bay. Maybe I don't want to take Green Bay right now. Maybe I'll save Kansas City. Um, let's talk about that if you're in a small pool. So if we look at this, what's our objective? The objective really is what's what team gives me the best chance to win that I don't think is going to go very far? I mean, that's essentially what you're trying to do. And again, when you're in a larger pool, we've got to take more chances. But in a small pool, if you had 10 people in a pool, you play it pretty chalky and you hope for the best. right? So you're going to be looking at the teams that don't have as, as great a chance to uh, survive. Let's just kind of let's format it so we can see which of those which teams are which here. Uh, so you've got a team like Cincinnati's got close to a 60% chance of winning. You've got Dallas with a 63.1% chance of winning. Maybe these are teams that you want to take in the first round, their favorite in their game in the first round with less likely chance of winning um, the following week. Of course, you know, these are 60% chances you guys know from your survivor pools that not easy to win those games, but this is what we have to do in a larger pool. Um, and even in a smaller pool, we may, in a larger pool, we in a smaller pool, we actually may uh, do the contrarian thing, which is take, uh, maybe we take a Kansas City in the first game, right? Where other people aren't going to be taking them. And then we're going to take our chances later in the pool, right? So there's a lot of different ways we could play this. Um, but maybe we take Kansas City and Tampa early. We assume they win this week. We take them, and then the following week, we hope that these two teams lose, or at least one of them loses, because we want to get rid of teams that we um, that we picked. And then let's say we just take the favorites. You know, we take a, a Green Bay, and a Tennessee is going to be favored at home. Um, there's a lot of ways to go about this. I'd be curious to hear your particular pools that you guys are in, and um, we could go over some strategy in the comments down below. That's what the comments are for. So hit me up with the comments, and we'll go over that. Now, I wanted to talk about one other thing, like how you could use this, and I'm sure there's a million different ways, but I play in some fantasy playoff leagues where we can take a certain amount of players per team. I've been in one particular one where we could take two players per team or have to take two. I forget what it was. It was two players per team, though. I think it was a max of two players per team. Um, I've been in other ones where you could just go ahead and take all the players you know that you want. I've been in uh, the one I won last year was set up in a way like a DFS where the, the players had a salary attached to them. And then you had to just make your own lineup based on the salaries and come up with the best possible team you could. There's a million different variations of these type of pools. But how I've won these in the past is doing exactly what I just did here, which is now I showed you how to do the calculations to figure out just the probabilities of each team advancing to where they're going to advance. What you do then is I just took the average score of that player in their, their average fantasy score. So Rogers average fantasy score this year was 22.3 point, uh, 23, 22.3 points. I then take the 22.3 points and I multiply that by each round and add them up. So he has a 0% chance of playing in round one. Rogers will not get any points this weekend. 100% chance he gets points in the wild card. Uh, this is the divisional round. He wins the wild card round, right? He's going to win. So there's a 100% chance that that Rodgers scores points in that game. There's a 69.2% chance that he scores points in the conference championship game. 
and then a 37.3% chance he scores points in the Super Bowl. I add those all up and then come up with 46.05 potential points. That's how I'm going to figure out my expected points. Now, Mahomes is going to be higher because Mahomes is playing this week. So the potential is there for Mahomes to play in more games than Rodgers has played, right? I mean, that's pretty intuitive. You knew that going in. But this is how you can look at it mathematically and get an idea just how much better is Mahomes or just how much more are we projecting for home, Mahomes than we were for Rodgers. And this is going to do that for you. Now, you're going to want to do this, obviously, for every position, every player. And then you've got to use your typical DFS strategies and fantasy game theories depending on, again, if we're in a small type of pool, you're playing with 10 of your buddies, you're going to go pretty chalky. I would just go ahead and take the best optimal lineup I can configure uh, based on those numbers that I'm giving you, right? So I don't know what that is right now, but go ahead and do the same, do that procedure for every single player on uh, every team, of course, at the uh, skill positions. And you'll try to figure out what the optimal lineup is going to be or something close to an optimal lineup. If you're playing in a huge one of these big online type of uh, pools, then obviously you're going to have to take some chances elsewhere and you're going to have to uh, mix it up a little bit, be a little different than the other guy. That's kind of how you win these big GPPs and these big type of tournaments. So you guys all know that. But I just wanted to show you some of the mechanics behind um how we use the sports books and how we can use their information to better our information. I've won a lot of pools by just using the sports books. I'm going to hopefully do some videos on golf pools. They're becoming hugely popular. I strictly use the lines based on the futures for that week's event. And uh, you'll see in some other type of pools that I do where I, I look at future events like the U S open to get an idea um, for pools like, uh, like that, where I've got, there's survivor pools, one and done type of pools in golf where you can only pick a golfer one time. So um, there's a couple of different strategies and ideas behind that. But using the odds, hugely important. Any pool that you're ever in, if you're not utilizing the odds and then understanding how to convert them and use them for your purposes, you are definitely behind the eight ball. I see so many crazy things in pools um, that I enter. I have such an advantage. By the way, you have... If you're following this series, you're going to have a huge advantage in every office pool outside of the ones that are purely luck, like a box pool for the Super Bowl. But anyone that takes a little bit of skill, you're going to have a huge advantage, which means EV, your expected value, is going to be positive. If you're following the Sharp app, following me in the Sharp Academy and watching these videos, it's going to help you in the long term become a more profitable, better, and really in office pools where you're not facing a large VIG and you're often facing very, very, you, you know, you're competing against other people who are just novice and they're not really as sophisticated as you're going to be um, by watching these videos. So let's kind of keep these going. We've got golf coming up. I'm going to have a whole thing on the NCAA tournament, which is not that far away. Crazy to think about. We have some other type of pools. I'm going to try to use this series while we're off from the NFL to give you guys some more um, info and help you guys out on how to become a sharper player in your office pool. So until the next one, good luck guys. Hit me down below with any questions. Check out the links also to some of the sports books. That's where you're going to find all this great info. And I uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon.